This is going to be a tough one. I've been going through quite a bit of emotional and physical pain this past week. Every day, my stomach feels like it is filled with needles because my anxiety is so high. It's absolutely paralyzing. I won't tell you about the specific event that birthed my current situation. I don't think it's really necessary for you guys to get the picture. I figured, though, that instead of brooding and spinning and drilling myself into the ground, I could use the pain I'm in to inform my writing so I can turn it into something positive. You guys seem to like it when I explain what it's like to live with autism, offering an unbelievable amount of support in the comment section. So as long as you guys do that for me, I'll be happy to show you my thanks with these videos. So here it goes. Loneliness. We have all been dealing with this emotion for the past year. Not being able to see our family, friends, or lovers for long periods of time has inspired the worst kind of emotions. If you take away one of the most integral parts of human functioning, that being our ability to socialize with others, it's bound to have drastic effects on the rest of our mind and body. Loneliness is a pernicious parasite of the mind that needs to be looked after, regardless if you are on the spectrum or not. However, loneliness can be experienced in different ways, some of which are more harmful and difficult to escape from. Loneliness is not always cured by the mere presence of another human being. For people on the spectrum in particular, it's a much deeper problem than that. I'd like to illustrate for all of you what the depths of chaos look like for the lonely autistic, but in order to do so effectively, I will discuss some basic psychology as it applies to the neurotypical or average person. In simple terms, there are two sides to a person's identity, the individual and the collective. The individual side pertains to what makes you stand out from everybody else, you know, what makes you unique. The collective side is what manifests when you try to integrate into wider society. In order to be able to live together in a society, human beings will compromise certain parts of their individual identity in order to get along with others. For example, if you're an introverted person, you'll make efforts to be extroverted in order to develop friendships or relationships. If you make too little of an effort, well, obviously you don't get anywhere. But if you make too much of an effort, you might come across as needy or you might exhaust yourself. Ideally, you would find a balance between your individual self and your collective self. What you are willing to compromise and what you aren't. If people didn't do this, if people only went around asserting their status as individuals, it would be like every kid at recess wanting to play a different game. It would just devolve into absolute anarchy. The key to living as a civilized, social human being is to agree to some sort of homogenous social game. Everybody approaches it in a different way, but supposedly everybody can play if they make the right compromises. The problem is that the rules of this game are laid out by neurotypicals. Now, seeing that the vast majority of the world is neurotypical, it makes sense to construct that societal game in a way that appeals to as many people as possible. Unfortunately, that leaves certain groups in a position where it becomes very difficult, if not impossible, to play that game. Autistic people form just one of these groups. What makes it so difficult for autistic people to play this game is the fact that the rules of the game are unspoken. They are communicated through nonverbal cues and body language. It is by complying with these cues that people are admitted entrance into the play arena. If you don't learn them, you miss out on a key part of your psychological health. For people on the spectrum, this unspoken language is completely indecipherable. It is an enigma as irrational and incomprehensible as the mathematical arrangement of the cosmos. The only thing we can understand, even if it's on an unconscious level, is that we have to sacrifice parts of our individual identity to appeal to others. So, naturally, we try to suppress the parts of ourselves that are generally understood to be autistic. For example, it is well known that people who are autistic have trouble looking people in the eyes. This is certainly the case for me, and you guys all know this if you've been following me for any period of time. When I find myself in social situations, my eyes do a sort of choreographed dance where, I don't know, I spend five seconds looking at the bridge of somebody's nose when I'm talking to them, and then I look away. 
Then I look up in the air as I say something contemplative. Then I look at them again in the eyes for two more seconds. Then I have to look away again, right? In my life, there were a handful of circumstances where this optical dance actually worked out in my favor. In one or two cases, people didn't seem to notice I had trouble looking them in the eye. However, in the majority of cases, my efforts resulted in failure. People were instinctually driven to anger or confusion because I couldn't do something seemingly as simple as look them in the eye. They thought I was being disrespectful or uncaring or insincere, when in fact the exact opposite was true. I was just doing my best to listen to what they were saying. This example of eye contact serves as just one of the many barriers to entry to this social game, to friendships, to relationships. Granted, I believe it is worth trying to work with some of our faults or quirks to see where we can fit into society, which in so many cases we so desperately want. Though, oftentimes, it feels like we are trying to compromise or change something that is so deeply ingrained within us. It's like trying to pray the gay away, right? It, it just doesn't work like that. However, if it means getting just a modicum of love and affection from somebody, autistics will do their own form of praying the gay away for as long as they can stand doing it. Depending on one's temperament, some will end up doing this for the rest of their lives, or some will retreat into perpetual isolation from sheer exhaustion. In my case, I had gotten to that point of exhaustion around two years ago, around the time that my YouTube channel started gaining traction. I completely isolated myself from other people and dedicated as much time as I could to the one thing that was lifting me above my self-hatred, above the resentment I felt for being autistic. In doing this, I suppressed the core truth that I mentioned before. Though other human beings were the greatest source of my anguish, they were also the source of my life's greatest joy and I needed them in order to have that integral part of the human experience, right? In order to sustain proper psychological health. Though it seems so obvious now, I pushed this truth down into my unconscious because I just become so exhausted trying to figure out how to play this social game. I had become so tired of trying to improve myself in order to get others to like me, doing more than most people do. Right? Like I, what did I do? I worked out, lost weight, I, I learned musical instruments, I tried learning another language, I developed a decent sense of humor, at least that's what people tell me I have. Uh, I educated myself on a bunch of different things, but no matter what I tried, I never got anywhere trying to make new friends or find new relationships. After a while, I just got sick of agonizing over stuff that seemed so pointlessly trivial, like whether or not sending more than one message to a girl I'm interested in would come off as creepy. I just got so sick of being self-conscious of my limitations and faults. Thus, isolation appeared to be a reasonable alternative. So for the past couple of years, I have isolated myself, focusing on my studies, as it was the only thing that seemed to provide me sustenance. Then, Something happened a few days ago that, like I said before, I won't tell you guys about. What I will say is that this certain event made me realize just how lonely my life has been. The realization just consumed me like a tidal wave and has been suffocating me for the last few days. I can't remember the last time I have felt this awful. And part of the reason why I feel so awful is because I can't decide how much of my current state is my fault. Like, think about everything I just said a moment ago, about trying to play the neurotypical game and not getting it no matter how hard I try. Would it not seem logical after a while to somebody in that situation to retreat into solitude when you've spent so much time overthinking about what you can do to improve yourself, thinking about what you need to change in order to get people to accept you, thinking about what you might have done wrong that made people reject you? Doesn't that sound exhausting? Being that paranoid all the time? Like, what would you do if you were in that situation? Anyways, a couple of days ago, when I was in a pit of despair, I reached out to my friend John. And some of you know who John is. He was my co-host when I did the Differently Wired show. I told him about everything that I just told you, and how I don't know how to get out of this pit I dunk myself. He said something that put my pain in proper context. I can't remember exactly what he said, but I'll paraphrase it. He said that because I was getting a lot of negative feedback from people who play 
the neurotypical social game, that it was blinding me to the fact that I have a lot of positive qualities, ones that I need to give myself credit for. Just because I have difficulty getting past the entrance gate into the social game, that doesn't mean that I don't have positive qualities to offer. In fact, I actually know this to be true. When I've gotten beyond that threshold in the past, the, the rare few times that I did, I was able to be a lasting positive influence in their life, especially with my, um, my ex-girlfriend, for instance. This is something that I need to not only tell myself, but get across to all of my autistic viewers, and even those who aren't on the spectrum. I've talked with so many of you these past two years, and so many of you have qualities that are above and beyond most human beings. You guys are some of the most well-educated, compassionate, hard-working people I've ever met in my life, and tragically, for a lot of you, your qualities are criminally undervalued. At least that's what all of you have told me. We need to collectively find a way where we can put our qualities on full display and reap the benefits for it. Catering to neurotypicals, while possible and useful in some ways, is painful and counterproductive in many others. If you guys can think of possible things we can do to build friendships and relationships, I'd love to hear your ideas in the comment section below. If I may offer one suggestion, if you guys are on the spectrum and are looking for friendships and relationships, my Discord server might not be a bad place to start. It's a well-moderated place with people that are remarkably well behaved and I see people in there like either voice chatting or text chatting in there every day and you guys seem to be doing great and I know all this is self-serving but you also understand its relevance to this conversation. I'd like to conclude with something else that is again self-serving but relevant. I have worked really hard at this YouTube channel. I've put a lot of time into building this community. I figured that I've earned the opportunity to advertise to the internet that what do the kids these days say? I feel like such a boomer. Um, I want to advertise that I'm on the market. Is that what you say? Instead of putting all my faith in apps like Tinder or what is it, Bumble, why not list my qualities here? All right. I'm six foot four, 180 pounds. I work out. I like to study. I'm self reflective. I've been told by a lot of people that I'm a great listener and that I have a great sense of humor. I make money doing what I love, talking about psychology and philosophy as well as advocating for the mentally ill. I love music, and I play several instruments, including guitar, bass, piano, and drums. And one important thing to mention is that I'm not looking for hookups, as that has never been my bag. I'm looking to have a meaningful relationship with somebody. If you would like to dispense with the drama and the superficialities and work at establishing a connection, I'm willing to make the effort if you are. Feel free to hit me up on Discord or email me. My address is on screen and in the description box below. So, thanks for indulging me, guys. I hope this video was helpful in some way. If it was, make sure you hit that like button. When you do that, it tells the YouTube algorithm that this video and the other videos on my channel are worth watching. That will then help my videos show up in other people's recommended feeds, and who knows, this particular video might come at a time when somebody really needs it. Make sure to follow me on Twitter, on Twitch, and remember, as I said before, to join my Discord server. Links to all of that are in the description box below. Finally, I'd just like to address my friend Calypso. Uh, merci d'avoir lu mon script, mademoiselle. And uh, until next time, just remember, as always, stay yellow.